It is October and that means it is time for my annual costume. You know, Halloween just always gives me a really good excuse to make a costume. Why would I make a costume any other time of the year? There's, there's no reason for it. So October 1st is always when I start planning the costume. Well, not really planning the costume. That's when I start making the costume. Usually it's the previous year when I have a, about a week to go, a few days to go in the current costume. I'm thinking, I wish I was making another costume. What can I make next year that would be more fun? You know, it's just whenever you get close to the end, you always think about the next time. So this year is the Grim Reaper. This is, I think this is the first year I'm not inspired by some other costume. I've done in the past the Mandalorian, you know, Ghostbuster, Pete Bakeman. Chose Pete Bakeman. If you're going to do it, Pete Bakeman. I've been, well, something from The Witcher last year, The Witch King. I can't remember. Uh, wasn't really enthused about that costume. That was unfortunate. I've done Fortnite, Templar Knight. I'm sure there's others I don't recall. Oh, Skyrim. I was a dragon priest. So every year I'm like, all right, what can I do? What can I, how can I expand my skills? Oh, I Scorpion from Mortal Kombat recently. So I'm always looking at you like, what can I do? And so this year I wanted to do something original. Like not the Grim Reaper's original, but this is my take on it. So I'm, my stylings. So I'm excited about that. And I need to start sketching because I have, I had a lot of ideas when I was thinking about this last year. Or actually I thought about it two years ago. I wanted to do it last year. I couldn't because my son wanted to be the Grim Reaper and he didn't want me to be the same thing and my costumes were always just way above and beyond and he didn't want me to outshine him. So I couldn't do it last year. So now it is this year. I've had a lot of ideas like this entire week prior to October. I'm thinking, all right, like let me kind of put this together in my head. What do I want it to look like? How do I want it to be? I think I've got it all worked out in my head. Now I just need to put it on paper, start sketching, kind of figure out a plan of attack. That's what I do when I start. I sketch out, all right, what is every item I need either to build or make or modify to make this costume complete? And then I kind of create an order because I always run out of time. Every year I run out of time. So there's some items I just never get to because I run out of time. So I try to create a hierarchy of, all right, if I get to this, that'd be great. If I don't get to this, yeah, I'd like to. If I don't, it's okay. I'm the Grim Reaper. You obviously got to have the skull mask. You got to have the hood. Uh, I want some LED lights. I want the lights to, the, I want the eyes to glow. I don't quite have that worked out. I'm thinking yellow. You know, first I wanted like kind of a black red color combo, but you know, yellow is aged and worn. And like, I want this costume to seem like old. Like this is a centuries old Grim Reaper world weary. So I'm thinking yellow. I'm not completely committed. Maybe the eyes are red. That looks a little more evil, but I'm just thinking I don't like yellow eyes going from out this big hood. I don't like how that, how that works. For the skull mask, I always, I've done this a number of costumes. I cut out the eyes. I put sunglasses in there so that way the eyes look very deep. You can't see my eyes because I don't want to ruin the illusion. You know, I want this big robe, lots of different materials, all black, but just very like shredded and old, worn, tattered, and just you kind of can't tell which end is up or down. Uh, I do want to do some shoulder pattern, some armor, just to like kind of give it like some heft, some size, and it would look cool. Uh, the hands, I'm going to look like something like skull gloves or something. I want the fingers to look like skeleton fingers. I don't know how well it's going to work, but I really don't have any other options. I mean, painting my hands, you know, makeup or anything, not going to work. So hopefully they make some good skeleton finger gloves that will be good. And I want a really large Sith, like just huge. I mean, initially, when I was thinking about this two years ago, like eight feet tall, four foot long blade is absolutely almost cartoonish so big. I need to just kind of scale that, see how that works. Eight feet tall won't even fit through most doorways. So I need to think about that. But there are some complications that make me think. Or there are some design decisions that may mean I am doing an eight foot tall blade. I thought about a belt, some kind of belt like maybe like skulls or something in it, you know, to like really give it that look. But I want this amorphous costume shape, and so if I tie a belt around me, you start to see shape. And I want it kind of almost like a blob, not quite a blob. So I think that's out. One thing I did uh, come up with is I want like a padlock, like right in the middle of my chest, you know, big ornate padlock. And like chains, like wrapping all around me. I don't know, you know, like Grim Reaper, he's entrapped, he's imprisoned, like with this job. So I kind of like, I like the symbolism of it. And then plus the costume just needs something. I think that kind of work with all these tattered robe things I'm thinking of. Now I do want a lantern slash hourglass. I mean the Grim Reaper hourglass, he's got to have it. I'm thinking like big, like this big. I want it, I want sand. I'm thinking red sand because that just look cool. I mean I could do brown sand. I have play sand already, but it needs to be red. Like give it that that push, that oomph. And I want it lit. I'm thinking maybe yellow lights. I have yellow eyes. Maybe yellow lights is a lantern. And I think that should be a really cool effect. Like, really, I want it ornate. I'm thinking kind of like gothic style, you know, like this big braided rope. I'm holding it as I'm carrying it. You know, the Sith on the other hand, that's pretty awesome. And I want the Sith, I want everything to be very warm, like very 
tattered and old and like the Sith is rusty and chipped and like it's been around for a long time. And so at one point, initially, I thought, uh, you know what, I want stilts. Because any costume, you add a foot of height to any costume, it just makes it more menacing. And all my costumes, it's Halloween. I want a little scary. I want a little menacing. So I have these jumping stilts that add, I think, a foot, maybe a foot and a half. I don't know. I need to measure that because I need, I need to start figuring out everything. I've got a broad idea. I need to start getting very specific. Uh, but these stilts, they're jumping stilts. They're not really made to stand still. Like, the base on them is that big. So... You know, if you're trying to stand still, you're always like trying to move to keep your balance because you just can't because that base is so small. And I've never fallen. Well, I've fallen in the grass, uh, but it is a long way to fall. On a hard surface, I'm probably going to break something. So I was concerned about that. Then I had the greatest idea that means I have to use stilts. And I think the stilts is going to come in handy because if that's really tall, I can use that as kind of to brace myself, to steady myself. But these stilts have a small base. And I was thinking, well, if I do that, I have to build some kind of boot or something that is Grim Reaper like. I don't know what that would be. To, cause you don't want to see stills, like kind of breaks the illusion. And then I realized just yesterday, goat hooves. Oh man, like you know, you got this really thin base, create a goat hoof to wrap around it. And how crazy would you see this seven foot tall Grim Reaper? Then you look down at his feet, and they're goat hooves. Oh my gosh, the effect of that! I couldn't pass it up. I've got to do that. So now I'm committed to that. Still not quite sure about the stilts, and you almost need a spotter, cause I do not want to fall on those stilts. I mean, there's there's no way out. I think with the with the Sith as a kind of brace, a cane, I think that'll help me balance and that'll be okay. And then initially, I wanted to like create some kind of pocket in my robes and put fake bugs in them. So as I walk, like these fake bugs kind of fall out. You know, this whole dilapidated, worn, tattered idea of these bugs fall. But I don't want to have to clean that up. I don't want to litter either. And so my latest idea on this, and I still need to think about this, uh, is maybe I get some realistic looking fake bugs and I just kind of tie it with fishing line into the robe, into my sleeve. So like, you know, when my, when my arm's up, you, know, you kind of have these bugs hanging down, like you don't see it and then they just, they start hanging. Uh, and I also thought, this is crazy, but like human teeth, human looking, not real human teeth, but like human looking teeth, tie that in the robe too, because it's just like teeth, like what is that? It's just kind of weird. It makes you think, but it's also kind of creepy. So that is the layout for the costume. Now I need to start sketching because this robe that's tattered and multi-layered, that's all I've got. I need to start figuring out how that looks. Now, the, the hood part, I want that to extend. Like, I want that peak to extend pretty far to, like, really have my face set back. That, I'll have to put plastic into the hood so it does that. I've done a hood a number of times, so I can take a pattern, do a takeoff of a pattern from number four for the hood. Don't want to attach the robe, just because when you try to attach the robe, like, when you move it, it, you know, the rest of your costume or robe pulls on the hood, gets it out of shape. I need it completely separate so it stays where I want it and doesn't, like, pull because the front of my robe pulls down and all separate. Now the other part of this, with the robe, if I'm stilts, I need a foot, I need that robe to be a foot longer than it normally would be because I'm on stilts and I need it, you know, pretty long. Well, if I'm off the stilts, which I'll probably be off the stilts in this costume some of the time, I need a way to kind of like pull it up and hook it so it is shorter. And that, like, so there's so many layers and things, I think that'll help hide the fact that it's pulled up because you won't really know. Or maybe there's a top half to the robe and a bottom half, you know, like a, a top and a skirt, just all one makes it a little tough. I don't know yet, though. I mean, it maybe I just make it one one long robe. I don't. I'm thinking maybe a zipper on the front with these sleeves and all this stuff tied into it. Might be better where I can put it on instead of trying to like pull the whole thing over my head, especially since it's going to be so long. All things to work out. So now the job is to start sketching. In this list, what would be at the bottom? The bugs and teeth hanging on the robe. Those would be last because yeah, it'd be cool if I get to it. If I don't, it's okay. The Sith must have the mask. Must have the robe. Must have the lantern. I'm doing the lantern. I just really like that. That's just such a cool effect, a cool detail. And it just adds like this whole other thing to the costume. Like the stilt and the, the goat hooves. Oh my gosh, like that's a must have. And I think, all, I think all of this is achievable. I feel like I have plenty of time. Now I've said that in the past, I don't always. But I, like last year I did The Witcher. Was it The Witch King? It's from The Witcher. Aaron Brack Glass, that's it. I think he's the Wild Hunt King maybe. A lot of armor pieces in that, and it not, it's not all symmetrical. Uh, you know, there's legs, you know, van braces, pauldrons, you know, like a lot of armor. Took a lot of time, and I did not finish that. And did he have a cost? Oh, yeah, he had a sword too. I did most of the sword. Just, that was one of the things. He looked cool. A lot of times I try to do costumes that I've either played the game or watched the movie and I kind of have a connection to. That, I just thought he looked cool, and I didn't have any other good ideas, so I went with it. And I think that's part of the reason I just don't have the enthusiasm I've had for that as I do for others. The year before last, I was Scorpion, and that, 
Then you've got the robe. I used to know all like the technical names for Scorpion because you as you research his costumes, like you kind of figure it out. He's got the kunai, his little spear on the chain. You know the whole mask, the head wrap, the hood, a lot of leather pieces. You know I had I did a belt that had a skull in it and just a lot of detail. You got the pants, everything. And like this costume is a little bit easier now. I don't under don't quite have a handle on say the robe. Once I handle on that, everything else gets easier. And it, the robe might just be simple. It's like a zipper down the front, and you just kind of like have a flap that hides it. And with all these tatters and like rags. But again, how do you start layering these rags and tatters and all that stuff and make it look worn? That's part of it. But I'm trying to create like a narrative out of this too. You know, like the chain and the padlock and the chains. You know, he's like he's in prison. You got this lantern, like you know, at the time, like time is always passing. He has a lantern taking people to the afterlife, you know, the Sith where you harvest the people and take them. You're like, you know, you gotta like create a narrative. It just makes it more fun, makes it more fun for me, for people, so that's where we are. So now I'm gonna pull out some paper. I need to start building stuff. I mean, first you gotta draw, you gotta draw plans, but then you gotta start building. And it is time to start figuring it out. Because I have some ideas, but I need to I need to go farther. Now a couple things I already have that I just pulled out quickly. These sunglasses, you, know, you get like these cheap sunglasses from any type fair, career fair, job fair, you know, um, festivals, parks, all these things. That's what I do. I just take the lenses out. You flip them around because you want the convex, concave, you want the concave side, you know, where it like, looks like in the skull mask, it's kind of bare. So it's like these gaping holes of where I should be. Very effective. I've done it a number of times. Very effective. I've got a bunch of plastic chain. This is from my scorpion costume. You know, he has like the spear on the chain. Well, I use plastic chain. I use some real chain too around my waist just to like look cool. This plastic chain, I'm just gonna you know, wrap it around me. I mean, think about it. Like, you see like this Grim Reaper chain all wrapped around it? It looks cool. I will need to prep it and spray paint it. Like, the black just looks a little cheap. You need, like, a steel look to it. Maybe a little rusty look. All achievable. I've got a bunch of material and cloth. I think I have... I might have a skull mask. I vacuum formed one last year for the Witch King. I think I'm gonna use the same one because it's a really good-looking mask. But it cost me about 20, 30 bucks every time I vacuum form a mask. Last year I did two pulls. That's like 50 bucks for a mask. Well, you know, if you can find one of these Spirit Halloween stores, I can get that same mask for like 10 bucks. I may buy me two or three because I'm always needing a skull mask. Oh, and the mask, I was thinking maybe I detach the jaw, cut it out of the mask. So as my mouth moves, it, the skull kind of moves, gives it just a little bit of articulation. I need to go through all my stuff, figure out what I have, what I need. I feel like the lantern. I wasn't sure what I was going to do the hourglass out of. And then I realized, oh, wait, two liter soda box. So I have that. Um, the rest of the lantern is going to be EVA foam. That is a great, it's like my standby for making Halloween costumes. EVA foam will do just about anything. This Sith, that, that's going to be a PVC skeleton. Because, I mean, the EVA foam cannot extend eight feet in a four-foot blade. So, that's going to be PVC skeleton wrapped in EVA foam. And then, just a matter of dolling everything up. I'm going to get sketching. I need to start working these ideas out and figure out how we're going to do this. Because the clock has started. So, I made some notes about all the pieces of the costume. Kind of an order of... What I think I need and when. And I started sketching this. This pencil. This pencil is right in a little white. I think I put the wrong lead in there. So I was just sketching in ink a little bit to get an idea of my Sith. You know, what it should look like. I was looking a little bit online to see if I got inspired. And really the only thing I liked about online is they showed this like kind of curved. A little more character. Like all these things you need to add character. Detail. Gouges. Story. Narrative. That's what this does. You know, like kind of the bolts on the side. I was thinking to just slide over the shaft and kind of blunt the shaft to get fit. I like the bolts in there. A little bit more character. I was looking at padlocks. Um, I had an idea of a padlock I wanted. You know, I, look, I was looking at some online. Nothing really sprang to mind. I may do like a three leaf clover type thing uh, instead of these. Like, kind of settled on that. I like the bolts in there. Trying to come up with ideas on the hourglass the lantern. Still, all that's still in flux. You know, one of those things, I might just have to wait until I get there and see. Here's a sketch of the hourglass. So I was kind of thinking overall. I'm liking it. I'm digging it. The idea for the padlock I was thinking. Cause, I mean, I want this thing big like I want and so I may do kind of a three leaf clover thing it's still still in flux we'll see but I brought out some PVC I always have a bunch of PVC I'm always making for costuming it's very lightweight and I just need to mock up this Sith you know I'm thinking eight feet by four feet well I want to make sure about that and I just want to see it without me on stilts me not on stilts get an idea of you know is this the size I really want because it seems big I want it almost cartoonishly big but I gotta see it to believe because in the past when I make these costumes and these props well, I have a reference as far as, you know, whatever the hero prop is, the game, the movie, the TV show. With this, it's all kind of feel. I mean, even with those, it's kind of feel because, you know, you can see it like in a video game. You see, like, a person's hand takes up so much space in the knife. Then when I mock it up and I feel it in my hand, well, does that feel too big? Does it feel too small? 
it's a little bit of guesswork. And what does it feel to me? Like, you're kind of scaling it to me. So this sift, I just want to know, I want to have it in my hand and get a real good sense of, like, how does it work? Because eight feet's big. My shop is not, a short shop. My shop's not eight feet tall. Doorways typically are seven feet tall. Some may only be six foot eight. So if I go to eight feet, it's already going to be too big for a lot of spaces. Now, with my stilts, I'm going to be about seven foot two with stilts. So I think I need that extra 10 inches to the top of that sieve. It needs to be above my head where the blade, like, you know, if you're posing, that blade would be above my head like this, like that. It seems good. All right, let's make a little demonstration. So let's say I got my stilts on. I'm seven foot two, about 10 inches above my head, right around here. So you got top of that staff. This is about three feet. That seems good. Like, you know, another foot, I kind of dig it. So I think, I think that size is good because, like, I want it. Like, you know, I'm posing here with my staff. That's good. Like, that's a good length. I mean, I'd say a little bit a foot longer, probably right on the money. So I think I'm good. I just, I got to see it. So we're going to take duct tape this stuff together. I'm going to try it on stilts, not on stilts, because when I'm not on stilts, I mean, it's going to be, be way above my head. It's going to be, like, up to here. And that's okay. I think it still kind of speaks to the cartoonishly, you know, stiff I'm trying to create. I just, I don't want to go more than eight feet. Just most offices, most commercial places, those things are going to be nine or ten feet. And I don't want to get into the thing where, like, this thing won't even stand up straight out and about. And outside, you know, no holds bar, but still, ten feet's tall. Where, you know, if I drive around, how am I going to take an eight foot sift around? I wonder if I put a joint in it to break it in half, because, yeah, if I'm driving a car, eight feet is crazy. I may, I may, you know, cut some BBC and create some kind of joint where I can twist them together. Maybe put like a little pin or lock in it. Yeah, that's another thing you got to think about when you're making these huge things. How are you going to move around in it? Yeah, you know, I mean, I guess I could strap it to the top of the car. I don't think I want to do that. Yeah, I'm going to make some notes. That is good because yeah, eight feet. That's huge. If I could break it in half, that'd be good. Put a joint. And I think just, you know, if I can find like maybe some smaller PVC to where I could weld it or glue it in here. And they just, they lock together. Some kind of pin, some kind of dowel. I don't know. That is down the road. All right, let me duct tape this because I do. I want to fold this together. I mean, it seems right, but I want to just hold it. So the eight foot by four foot Sith certainly has some limitations. Like just move, maneuvering around my shop, which my shop is not huge, granted. But this line to the end is four feet. This is a foot and a half back. That's why I have to cut this piece. I don't have to, but this thing is huge. I mean, it won't even stand in my shop. I knew that. And I can't, can't even see it in the camera to get a good feel of it. I'm hitting the ceiling, I'm hitting everything. I do that blade length though. I do love that. Because it'll kind of it'll kind of curve down. It's way too big. I'll have to put a joint in it. But even then, like I may have to put a joint for the top because you know the blade is going four feet one way, I'm going four feet the other way. It's huge. I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to think about how this thing constructs, but if I could stand this up in here, it'd be awesome. I mean, with the stilts, I think we're really we're onto something. The blade length is exactly, four feet is exactly what I was looking for. You can see that I mean, this thing's kind of slant a little bit just due to the tape not holding it, but I think we're it. And now I think I figure out how this thing attaches together and attaches together well so it doesn't fall apart when I'm cosplaying. That's basically what Halloween is. It's cosplaying. Uh, yeah, this is a big old piece of PVC. That's the only thing I had. The other piece I had was 10 feet. And that's 10 feet. Yeah, I knew that would stand up in here. Man, you think I'm on stilt? It's like this tall? And I got this big blade, you know, like you're posing for pictures. I mean, come on. That blade just looks awesome. But yeah, I'll have to joint the blade at the top. Have to joint the staff in the middle. I think about that. Because the whole thing, I'm going to use this size PVC. I think this is inch, maybe inch and a half PVC. Let's see. Oh. Where is the writing on it? Three quarter. It's only three quarter inch PVC. All right. I'll just face it in EVA. Man. Completely ripped my duct tape. You think I'd do better than that? But I'm gonna use three-quarter inch PVC, wrap it in EVA foam. I like this blade part, this is a little thick, but I'm just gonna make the whole blade kind of thicker just to account. I've tried to flatten PVC before in swords and things to be a little thinner. It's a pain in the butt to thin it. You gotta heat it. You gotta try to mush it or mash it or flatten it, however you would call it. I don't like it. I think with this, I'm just gonna thicken my PVC. Thinking my EVA that goes on top of it, and you know, maybe I like I'll cut it out for the PVC, like the body, the handle, the body. I'll wrap it fine. But, you know the blade. You want the blade kind of thin, but I think at the thinnest, maybe I'll just go one format thick, and then have it kind of taper up to get the top. Cause you need it curved. You need that that edge on the blade. But I don't need it to be super sharp. 
All right, I'm gonna have to take this thing outside just so I can get a good sense for it because I cannot get a sense of it in here. But it is, it's pretty big. Maybe I'll throw the stilts on too. All right, I'm on stilts. I'm trying to do a test of this here. I mean, this is like the biggest spot in my shop. I'm trying not to fall because it is close quarters. And these stilts are not good in close quarters. I mean, they're really not good in any quarters because you can't stand anywhere. But I just I want to get a feel for it. And a lot of times I found is that being on camera, it gives you a really good feel for how big things are. All right. That's one good thing I like about this sit is it it is a balance point for these stuff. These things it is a small little base. Like, let's turn this thing around here. My shop is too small for this stuff. As far as like a third, let's see if I can't get this thing stood up. Does it help me balance? It kind of does. I mean, usually if I'm trying to stand in one spot, I've got to keep walking as I kind of keep my balance. You can see it's not the easiest thing in the world. All right. That is just massive. But you know, when you're this tall, like that blade, that blade makes sense. I can balance decently well when I have this. I mean, I'll have. I need to go outside and get a good look at this. All right, good first test. It's awfully tall. I, I'm kind of impressed myself that I'm still as nimble on the stilts as I feel like I ever was. Because those things, the first time I put them on, man, they're a trip. It took me, it took me about a few days of wearing them to under, kind of get a feel for balance. And ever since then, my balance has been amazing. But it's a good first test. The most important thing I learned was not only was I right in my eight foot by four foot kind of guess as to how big I wanted this. This thing has got to be collapsible. I don't know the best way to do that. It's got to be three pieces. That is the most important thing we learned. I want the staff to kind of curve. Now you can heat this up and start to curve it and it doesn't need to be perfect and more mangled kind of the better. But you know, if you bend this too much, you just kind of, you break that joint. The joint is not wonderful. So I just want to bend it a little bit. And I think it'd be one of those things where you start working here, bend and bend and bend and bend a little bit and then bring it back in. I don't need a lot of bend to it or you don't want any bend to it because if I'm using it to support, if we got bend on it, it's going to make it want to bend more. Maybe I just want it straight. Maybe I need to test my 10-foot piece. Because I, was using a, I was using a 2 inch piece of PVC to support myself, and that worked well. I really need to use my 3 quarter inch to make sure that works equally as well. I mean, this, this does not flex much. But you get to 10 feet, it flexes more. I don't want to bend this whole thing, never having to test it to make sure that an 8-foot, 3 quarter inch will be a stable. 2 inch, quite a bit bigger. Of course, that's stable. I'm going to test that too, just to make sure it... You're, and, then too, putting the bend in, I think it's going to want to make it go wonky to where if, I, if I'm putting my weight on it, it's going to want to, if you've got a bow, it's going to want to bow more. It may not be as stable. The goal is that you've mocked it up, you've kind of tested it, you make sure it does what you want to do. And that's why you want to, when you mock it up, you want to use materials like we're going to use in the final iteration. Because like I just said, I use two inch PVC as my cane. Well, two inch is going to be a lot more stable than this three quarter. I think three quarter will be fine, but I don't want to just say, oh, it's fine. And then I'm out in this whole costume and it breaks or it snaps. So that three quarter inch, that will not work. You know, when I stood up and was on it, that thing is just flexing. I mean, there's just, you see much flex is just this little short piece. Double this piece, it is more than double the flex. Now the two inch was sturdy enough, but that is such a big piece of PVC. I did not want to handle it, it's so big. Uh, I don't know, I know they make PVC in one inch, one and a half. So that two inches is bigger than I wanted. I've got it, it's seven foot six, it's a little shorter than I wanted. I can make do with six inches short, but I'd really like it smaller, two inches really, a lot bigger than I wanted. Now this for the blade part, that's fine. And actually the handle being thicker, you know, the blade, you want the blade to come to a nice thin point. The handle being so much thicker makes this look thinner in comparison, which is ideal. But I don't know if I want two inches. The bad thing is I got two pieces of two inch, one is seven and a half, one is seven and a half feet, there's five feet. You know, if I only had one that's eight feet, cause like I really want that eight foot. But I'm budget conscious, you know, if I got seven foot six and it works, I'm gonna go seven foot six. Is six inch short I wanted? Yes. Is anybody really gonna care about me? No. The handle, I'm not curving it. I don't think I need to sketch that. That is just gonna be wrapped in EVA foam and then I'm just gonna create some designs in it with a, I got like a wood burning tool. I think I've ever used it for wood burning tool. I'm always using it to like carve up EVA foam. It works great for that. Heat is quick. All right, trying to figure out this Sith. I sketch all my props from SketchUp. It just gives you a great idea of how does the scale relate to each other? How does it look? And so I sketched it with a two inch handle. And my first thought was, I'm sorry, I sketched it with 
a one inch handle. My first thought is, oh, that just looks way too skinny for the size of the blade. So I bumped it up to two inches. If I get an inch and a half PVC, if they even make that, I didn't see anything on the website they had inch, they didn't have an inch and a half. If I get an inch and a half, it'll basically be two inches after you put the EVA foam on it. That still just looked a little skinny for me. And so then I bumped it up to three inches, where if I use my two inch PVC, put it, put EVA on it, you're gonna be basically like two and three quarters. You know, maybe we can thicken it up to get three. Like that scale proportion just looked right for the blade size. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep the two inches kind of big. I mean, especially if I'm wearing gloved hands, I think it's gonna be a little bit big. But maybe I just like, uh, I could make it spray some spray adhesive on there to give it a little bit of grip in case that's an issue. Like with the gloves and everything, I'm just not getting a good grip on it. But proportion wise, it's gotta be proportionate and it needs to be three inches or pretty close to it. So we're gonna keep the PVC I have. I've had that PVC for who knows how long. It is perfect. It is seven foot six inches high. And so the, where the blade starts, the blade is about eight inches tall. So it starts basically seven two. So I've got like, that's plenty of real estate to like lock everything in place. I don't know how I'm gonna do that yet. I'm thinking two inch adapters for the handle where that splits in the middle and in the blade, I guess maybe just another, cause I have another piece of two inch PVC. I don't want that for the blade, but you know, maybe like for the top of it, how will I do that? I'm gonna figure that out, I'm gonna think about that. Maybe I get a two inch coupler and I just run the blade kind of into it, just drill right through it and in, into it, do it that way. I need to see, cause you know, if they made a two inch to like two inch to three quarter inch adapter, like what quad fitting type thing, that would work. I just need to see what they have. If they don't, worse comes worse, two inch to two inch coupler, and I'll just run my three quarters, just drill it right through, and that way it's balanced, got plenty of support, and that'll work fine. I just need to take a trip to the home improvement store and see what they've got. But I've got the handle, and I think a coupler for that base of the handle, you know, to lock in, and I just maybe run a bolt through it. I'm still, like that is still up in the air, because I don't want to see a bolt head on it, but maybe it ultimately just doesn't matter. So in sketching this Sith, I mean, this is a big run. This is four feet of blade. This is just a scrap piece of wood I had that is thin and flexible. So I know my point here on the end of the blade, I know where it intersects the handle. So I'll just kind of set this thing up, kind of giving it the curve I want, a nice gentle curve. And now I have a nice good curve to trace. Cause I was trying to do it by hand. You can see I've got some wavy lines here. Uh, this gives me a nice straight line. Chances are you probably have some thin piece of wood or some something long and flexible that if you just clamp one end, you can get it done and get a nice curve. That's what it's all about. Like you want this thing to look good, you want a good curve, you need a bit of, cause what I'm gonna do, I, I trace everything on paper Make sure I've got it right, and then I transfer it to my EVA foam, cut it out. So I've got my blade sketched. I mean, this is this is huge. This is absolutely huge. I think the way I've drawn it, it's very straight. I think in orientation to the handle, it needs to be a little more angled down. That is something I'm not gonna resketch for that. I can just adjust that as I do it. I guess I need to make a note on my paper to do that. Cause I may forget. That gives me a great roadmap as to where it happens with that blade. So this is my Dragon Priest costume, or at least part of it. And I made a hood and I had never made a hood before. And you can see a lot of little strings hang on this thing. You know, it's time has not been kind. But it's like, it's perfect. Like if you want to put these strings hanging down, like it's great shape, the way it envelopes my head. Shape overall is great. So I did a hood for Scorpion. I used this as a base point and drew off of that. And the Scorpion, I like that a little bit more and I might need to pull that one out to look at it because that is black outside, red inside, and it had some pleats on it. So there's a little bit more to it. And my Grim Reaper hood, I want that to be black on the outside. I want a red liner on the inside. Just, I think it's a cool effect. You need a little bit of highlights, some colors, and red's gonna be my accent color. And a little bit of yellow, because I want, I want the eyes yellow. I'm th I want to do like some other stuff with the yellow, but this is a great hood. And once I figure out how to sew something, get a pattern for something, I'm not gonna reinvent the wheel. I'm just gonna sketch again. So we like with this, I'll sketch one half, I'll mirror it and sketch the other half. Boom, got the hood. The liner's a little bit different. I look at my Scorpion one, I cannot find that offhand. It's somewhere in all my stuff, I got a lot of junk. Like this hood, I mean, look at it, it's great. Now for the Grim Reaper, I do want it to come out a little bit farther, a little more peaks. I want my face to be a little more in shadow because I want my eyes, I want them to glow. So I need a little more shadow for that. But that, I'm just gonna insert, like when I sew this up, I guess I'll have like maybe plastic coming from the head out, maybe just the peak and that'll bring it out where it'll still, I don't know, I'll need to play with that and pin some plastic in there and see, do I need it to come down a little bit here? Just kind of keep that nice curve like that. Cause I don't want it to droop in front of my face. Especially the longer you get, it'd cover my entire face. Don't want that. I want it to be out about right here. I don't know, maybe 
and peaked it out. I mean, I want it almost cartoony, but just on the verge of cartoony, but not. And this base is great. So, got my hood, rest of the robe. I don't know. So, like, with this, this whole piece from Dragon Priest kind of looked like their hood came into this front smock, or whatever you call it, and went down. And so, part of the problem with the hood being attached to this when I had this costume is, like, this wants to kind of pull down, you're pulling it up. And so, with this Grim Reaper thing, I want the hood to kind of be its own sort of piece. I need to see what I did with Scorpion. I can't remember. I think that was separate. But this just, it's always like, I'm always like trying to pull this back or trying to get it in place. There's just too much weight on there. And then I had, you know, the Dragon Priest has those awesome daggers. I created these little elastic things for the daggers. I could put them in here when I didn't want to hold them. And I could just like pull them out and be like, oh, where'd those things come from? And that, of course, pulled this whole thing down even further. I don't know how I could have fixed that. I'm not sure what happened. I'd go back about, uh, go back and do it again. But here's how that's, I need to figure out, and then to the shape. I mean, it's just kind of curved to the peak. Does it? I'm, I'm thinking probably curve to peak. Right here, I'll start right here. I'll just come up farther. Start right here. Come up farther. I think, like, right in here is where I would want it. I mean, like, this one, it may come a little low. Like, I may need to straighten this out instead of coming down. Go a little straighter. Because it, it wants to hang right here. A little low. You may just want to pull it back a little bit. You want a little bit of room? But I'm not sure I want that much room. I will have to account for the fact that I'm going to have a mask. So that's going to make things a little bit bigger. That's the thing, like, as you're working piece by piece, I need to remember, oh, I'm going to have a mask. That's going to take a lot more space in here and kind of push this off my face. So you need to account for material thickness and all that. All right, I found my scorpion hood. This one, I like the shape of this a little bit better. It doesn't seem to fall on my face as much. I'm mean, probably just, this thing's been sitting all wrinkled up. I think it's lost its shell, its shape a little bit. But this is good. I think it needs probably a little bit of plastic. I mean, you might put spray some starch on here to stiffen it up. But still, I want it to extend farther, so I think plastic will work better. But I love, like, this red, like, this red look. You put a skull in there. I should get the skull for Scorpion too to give you the full effect. But it's nice. It's not attached to anything else so you can hang the way it to hang. I'd put a snap on here. I'd put a snap at first and rip it, you know, figuring things out. You can see this one. It's got all these pleats in here. Nice, lovely detail. I'm trying to look at how I set it in, but I think I dyed all this fabric. I can't remember what this fabric was. Usually I just buy fabric every year. I may have to buy fabric for this one, but it came out nice. I mean, look at that. That red, especially because I had the mask in here. So I think I probably, this probably works out the mask so it helps keep this shape because the mask is a little further. But that red, just nice level of detail. That's why I want that with my Grim Reaper to give that level of detail. So I'm probably going to pattern off of this one. This one just seems to fit a little bit better. You know, you learn, you make things better. So this was my Scorpion Hood. You can see it kind of made the hood stay in place. Looks good. I wasn't super happy with this mask. I mean, I wish it looked a little, little bird-like. That's what I didn't like about it. But as far as the mask, sunglasses lens in here, painted black around the eyes, so like it really gives a great look where it looks like it's just empty, empty soul. Love that. This is the mask I used last year for Aridan Breck glass. And I vacuum formed it so that I could just make a copy. This year, I'm going to go to Spirit Halloween. If I can find a few of these, I'm going to buy like four or five of them. Because this one looks a little angry. I don't actually want an angry Grim Reaper. I want a morose grim reaper or world weary grim reaper do they make a skeleton mask that's world weary i don't know uh, if i can't find it i'll just use this because this is a good size it fits my face well that's why i like it for aridin we'll keep rolling